Hello students, welcome to the series on entrepreneurship. Today we are going to study contract management. Now let us first study the objective of this chapter. The basic objective is to study the concept of contract management and the importance and effective contract management with vendors and buyers. Now why contract management needs to be effective? Because it is going to have an impact on business operation. Now let us study the concept in details. The concept of contract management. Contract management is a process of systematically and efficiently managing contract creation. It involves correct execution and analysis, maximization of financial and operational performance and minimization of risk. Now why contract management is important for all business people? Because here you have to execute it in a detailed way. Execution and analysis will help you to improve your productivity because it will help you to better manage your relations with vendors and your customers. It will also minimize your risk that is the cost will be reduced if contracts are made properly. What is a contract? A contract is a written or oral legal binding agreement between the parties identified in the agreement to fulfill terms and conditions outlined in an agreement. So contract is basically an agreement between two parties, party A and party B or there could be multiple parties. So people who are outlined with the name and in the address, they are liable to fulfill the terms and the conditions of the contract for a definite period of time. Contract management. It is management of contract with customers, vendors, partners and employees. The personnel in the company they are required to negotiate, support and manage effective contracts. Now you have contract with vendors, you have contract with buyers, partners, employees and also with customers. These contracts they are a binding on people to perform in relation to the amount of money which is being invested or which is being involved. So the personnel of the company that is the people and the human resource of the company is um, dealing with the designing and the drafting of the contracts in such a way that everybody is satisfied. All the parties who are impacted by the contract must be satisfied in relation to the money invested. Now let us study the forms of commercial contracts. The various forms of commercial contracts are employment letters, sales invoices, purchase orders, utility contracts, outsourcing and international trades. The various forms of the contracts are impacting the business activities from employment orders to purchase orders and to customer warranties and also outsourcing of services and other activities. So these are the forms which generally impact your way of working in business. Now necessity of designing contracts. The complex contracts are often necessary for construction projects, goods and services that are highly regulated services with detailed technical specifications and IP agreements. Now it is very necessary that you frame intelligent contracts and do effective management because sometimes the projects are very complicated where specifications can be more than 1 lakh specification that if you go for a very big construction project. Now the construction project would uh, deal with the specifications of the materials used, the brands used. Uh, the uh, designs, the architect, the interior, the exterior. So there are many, many issues related to the uh, construction of the projects and also the CSR issues impacting if there are accidents, who will be responsible, uh, what, what is the implication of using child labor or other activities. There should be no harassment. So there is lot of uh, complex activities uh, which are legal which are philanthropic and which are cost uh, based sensitive activities which need to be specified in contracts before signing any project. So the contracts are detailed for all the activities related to services which are technical, 
where ordinary people cannot understand because you need the expertise of uh, engineers or doctors in terms of using medicines uh, where we are using the patents of other companies to manufacture drugs and other chemicals in the industry. Use of contract management software, the contract management software aids to administer among multiple parties. Employees have the pressure to better access and mitigate the financial and legal risk associated with it. Now, nowadays because technology is there, you have softwares and computers where once the contract is feeded, it can be accessed by all the parties from their own destinations. And these softwares aid you with all the uh, various specifications. So, uh, whatever is left, you can cover because that software aids you in better administration. And because you are better equipped with the knowledge of the software, uh, people and the human resource, they are more trained to reduce the legal and the financial risk associated with all the agreements happening in the business. The areas of contract management include authorization and negotiation, baseline management, commitment management, communication management, contract visibility and awareness, document management growth that is sales side contract, contract compliance and governance. Negotiation is basically for delivery services and cost, commitment is for time and issues related to quality, communication is to reach in terms of marketing and advertising of the uh, sales and the goods, visibility and awareness is how much you are making that contract to be known by people that you have given the best to them. Document management is the number of copies given or the number of uh, documents which are to be made and given to each party whether he is a customer or a vendor. Growth has to be done in targets re related to sales and contract compliance and governance is related to administration and the detailed compliance related to taxation and support to the governments and the other political parties. Phases of contract management. Contract management can be divided into three phases, pre-contract phase, contract execution phase and post award phase. So the pre-contract phase is the preparation, uh, drawing an outline, searching for specifications of products and services. Contract execution is to draft and design and agree that is negotiate and do it. Post award phase is documentation and distribution and compliances. Compliances need governance structure. In 1979, Nobel laureate Oliver Williamson wrote that governance structure is the framework within which the integrity of a transaction is decided. Now, compliance is that the party's credibility has to be there, the honesty has to be there to comply with the government norms and also with the taxation norms and the transportation and the costing norms. So it, it is a credible structure which has to support the countries and the visions and the philosophy of the uh, sustaining government. Now let us study the components of collaborative governance. First component is relationship management structure. This deals for all the parties working together. Second component is the joint performance and the transformation management process which is designed to track the overall performance of the partnership. Now when you study the relationship management you have to see to whom you are being uh, related and where you are impacting. We have the insurance sector where is the third party liability insurance that is if you are met with an accident and if the harm is given to the third party then who will bear? So these things are to be decided and outlined before we are uh, negotiating with the contract because it is not only two parties working uh, in a business sector but any accident or any leakage from company can pollute the environment and also uh, create accidents. Uh, you have seen the Bhopal gas tragedy where the public had been impacted. So if the contracts are made efficiently for creating responsibility and the uh, litigation areas, it would be uh, the companies can be saved from the death which happened with the Union Carbidite company. 
uh, that was basically bankrupt because of the litigation from all sides and all aspects of the suppliers, vendors and the public. Joint performance is the execution uh, so as to track how one's performance would be a sequence where the other person would connect and get the work done. Then is an exit management plan. This is the third component of governance which is needed to make ethical proactive changes for mutual benefit of all parties and fourth is the compliance for special concerns and regulation. Exit management plan is if some ethical area is there which requires if some accident is happening or some harm is being uh, created through the transaction or the process or the product, uh, you need to be having an idea of respectfully exiting out, the, out of that agreement because now you cannot work if uh, others derogatory efforts are impacting your credibility. So, we must have an exit plan which is not binding that we will commit it for 15 years of 10 years. If conditions are favorable then only the agreements can work and then the fourth component is the compliance that is you have to agree with the rules regulations and the policy structures of the domestic and the host country. Now, let us study the statutory provisions for governing the purchase transaction. We have the Indian Contract Act of 1872, the Indian Sale of Goods Act of 1930 and the Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 1996. Now, these acts are legal binding acts which are principally for the quality transaction of services that is uh, the contract act is basically giving with the guidelines that how do we have to enter into the contract with the name and the address. Uh, the both the parties have to be mentally sound and they both have to be adult that is you cannot have contracts with child or kids who do not have understanding. Then the sales good act has to give you goods in terms of quality and have to give you full value for the money invested the good should not be harmful for the public health. Now, let us study the constitutional provisions. All contracts shall be made by an authority empowered to do so by or under the orders of the president in terms of article 299-1 of the constitution of India. So, constitution basically gives you a legal binding that when you sign a contract in uh, high court or any court of India you are basically liable to fulfill all the terms and conditions related to the sale deed or to the other deeds which you are signing. Now, let us study the general principles for contracts. The terms of the contracts must be precise and definite. Standard forms of contracts should be adopted. The legal and the financial advice should be taken in drafting the clauses. Price variation clause should be provided only in long term contracts where the delivery period extends beyond 18 months. Now, there are certain principles where people need that when you are drafting contracts, they should not be very lengthy, they should be precise, definite, they should be understood, there should be no leakage, no loophole, no gap area. Every aspect, even like it is not only quality even the brands should be covered because when you specify the brand then the price becomes definite that is you must have the capping for the price and uh, the time slot should also be agreed upon. Mode and terms of payment should be clear, contract should contain a provision for recovery of liquidated damages for defaults on the part of the contractor, a warranty clause is essential suitable provisions for settlement of disputes to be incorporated. Now, first is terms and conditions of payments, warranty that is even after you have acquired the goods and if they do not perform after the checks of quality then who is responsible. So, warranty will give you a safer side that the seller who is giving you the goods at least must give you a warranty of 1 year or 5 year depending upon the uh, performance or the productivity of the product to which you are associated. So, these things are essential which will make contracts effective and there will be uh, 
no hurting of the parties and in case if the contractor is not able to fulfill your uh, uh, production, then you must also have a clause to liquidate his assets. Acceptance of contract, contract is deemed to come into force with the acceptance of a tender, acceptance of the same is to conveyed by the supplier within 7 days of the receipt of the supply order. If the contract is not received within the stipulated period, the supply order is deemed to have been fully accepted by the firms. Now, the contracts are between the suppliers that is the vendors and the manufacturers. This is a kind of a order which is agreed between the two parties that the supplier is going to give goods and services within a stipulated period of time. When the tender is opened that is there are 7 suppliers who have given a tender to the manufacturing parties or maybe 100 people who have applied for this uh, purchase order. So, only 1 or 2 suppliers will be given the order. So, the acceptance date of the order or the contract will be on the day uh, the tender has been opened and when the tender has to be uh, open and the party has been allotted that is the acceptance date and 7 copies have to be given to the various departments linked to the supplier's side that is all the departments of the supplier should be given with a copy of the tender and the order so that they can start working. Termination of contract, if contractor is found to have made any false or fraudulent declaration a statement to get the contract then you can terminate the contract. If is found to be indulging in unethical and unfair trade practices then also termination of contract is valid. Item offered by the supplier repeatedly fails in the quality inspection you can terminate the contract. There should be a clause for the termination of the contract that is if the buyer has given a contract to a supplier and the supplier is using unfair practices in terms of payments, in terms of uh, giving fraud goods or giving you quality which is below the specifications or using unethical practices of saving his cost, then the buyers can cancel the contract, but this has to be in accordance with the clauses. Need for caution, government procurement is governed by plethora of rules and regulations, procedures, manuals and orders. Hence, abundant care needs to be exercised while deciding on contractual matters. Only matter written on paper carries any value in terms of government dealing. Now, when we are dealing with government and we are taking orders uh, through tenders of construction or roads or any government project, the contract management has to be done in more detailed way because in terms of government dealing, verbal clauses have no value, only what is written paper. Uh, written on paper carries value. So, when you take any project from government in terms of construction or in terms of research or in terms of execution of any activity of government domain through ministry or any government institute, it is important that you draft the contract in more effective way. Management of contract, implementation of contract should be strictly monitored. Paper procedure for safe custody and monitoring of bank guarantees or other instruments should be laid down. Monitoring the progress of supply or work should be done carefully. The extensions for bank guarantees or other instruments should be sought immediately. Now, when management of contract is there like if you are into exports or into imports, it is important that all the documentation and all the paper work should be done the uh, bank guarantees or the other instruments related to the financial support should be uh, checked and should be decided in advance. You should also check the expiry date and there uh, when the claims have to be made a full follow up is needed to manage the contract. Dispute should be resolved in easy way, legal advice should be sought before initiating any action. Uh, if there is any uh, conflict between the parties. It is important that the party should mutually decide it. Taking to court is a highly costly procedure. So, out of court settlement is the one best option that you can manage your contracts. Before framing the contract it is important that you take legal actions and even if you want to initiate any action you should 
sought legal advice because if you initiate wrong actions it will incur a cost or it will be a kind of a lawsuit against you. The relaxation in the contract terms and conditions should be discouraged as it could increase the cost of doing business. Contracts should be closely monitored. The follow up action should be taken promptly. Now any relaxation on friendly basis should be avoided because the more you relax and more you become lenient your cost of operations will be increased. So it is better that you identify every specification even if you are working with your family or with your friends because a good specification and outline will save you uh, of lot of confusion and headache and also the cost. Causes of failure of contracts. Contracts fail primarily due to multiplicity of agencies, delays, lack of clarity in decision making. In spite of contracts being made efficiently, in spite of all legal advice sought, contracts do fail in market and that is why you see lot of litigation in high courts which is impacting not only the public but is also impacting the business and also uh, the government in terms of the cost incurred. Uh, the contracts fail because when there are many parties involved like uh, when you are dealing with uh, labor that is more than 1 lakh or you are dealing with uh, vendors who are many. So if the contracts are impacting many parties then you cannot control everybody in the uh, implication area. So here sometimes the contracts do fail, sometimes the projects are delayed beyond your control so contracts will lose value because uh, when the project is delayed it not only increases the cost of construction but it is also the opportunity cost and the business lost which would generally make the gestation period of the business high and eventually make the project to die. The lack of clarity uh, of fixing who is the decision maker, uh, where is the responsibility center, who is impacted and who is implied for every detail activity is not specified. Failure in implementation relates to poor selection of vendors, vendor pre-qualifications not stringent, unrealistic rates quoted, outcome is that the supplier may fail to comply, retendering would be required and loss of valuable time. Sometimes you try to win a contract where you want to have a win and a loss situation but these contracts in eventually in long term would fail. So when we open tenders, when we work with people it has to always the negotiation has to land up with a win-win strategy. When you give a profit margin and give, give a rate which is reasonably fair uh, to give profits to the contractors then they can work in the markets. Unrealistic rates for one year can be sustained but after that the uh, activities would slow down in the market. So we have to be realistic that what is the cost we are going to incur, how should we specify in terms of credibility, what are the ethics. And even the vendors to whom you are connecting uh, need to have good qualification in terms of knowledge and in terms of financial uh, wealth also that is the financial credibility in term, terms of checking their banking records is also important. Suggested remedies, the expert should be hired to focus at the time of drafting tender document. The objective and purpose of the contract must be clearly outlined. The legal safeguard should be incorporated. Vendors interest also should be safeguarded. The responsibility centers should be identified to fulfill the specified targets. Processing for payment should be completed within the prescribed time frame. Now let us study the summary of this lecture. Contract management needs to be designed in an efficient way to enhance the productivity and accuracy of business processes. The effective management will help in easy implementation of all the clauses. By this people can with the mutual agreements do the business without conflicts. So contract management is important where there will be less conflicts and successful business operations. Thank you students.